so sturdy as grab onto that, right? What could go wrong? Just it rips out of the intake and you go flying and <laughs> it actually is pretty sturdy. What do you think? Should we try and pull it out of here? Yeah, if it fits. Yeah, it looks looks close, doesn't it? It's very close. You're good, keep going. Yeah, it's not gonna fit. It's gonna hit the garage? It's definitely gonna hit the garage door. Yeah. This is obnoxious. There's a carburetor up there somewhere. Well, <laughs> Oh, the tree, the tree. Oh, I'm in the tree. Mount St. Petrol. my friends and welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke, Thunderhead289 here on YouTube. We got our buddy Joe with us today and we're just up to doing stupid stuff again. Um, can't seem to get a nice day outside so. Stuff like this happened. We're kind of curious, uh, how far away can we move a carburetor from an engine and the thing still runs? So behind us we have the makings of a massive intake. Holly kind of did their whole Skyram thing, and I thought, well, oh, you know, they're just moving air. I wonder what happens if you try and blend fuel and air. You know, if a high-rise intake is supposed to make more torque, in quotes, just curious what this will do. If it even runs at all, because it's completely absurd. So with that, let's jump in. So we got our adapter on there, our tubing laid in. That's just ridiculous. And we're just arbitrarily squaring it up. We're going to lay a few tack welds on it, kind of get it square, and then we'll weld it, flip it over, plug weld it, and, uh, and we'll see what we have. This is a stupid idea. This is really dumb. Fancy helmet guy. Nice. <laughs> Real fabric cobbler now. Yeah, exactly. Fire extinguisher handy because we just dumped a bunch of fuel on the intake. That we definitely should have cleaned up. Wind chime. It's probably going to whistle down the highway. It's probably going to do more than that going down the highway. <laughs> if it gets to the highway, that'll just be an achievement in of itself. That's so dumb. <laughs> it looks like a spaceship. <laughs> Should put LEDs in it that flash around it. Well, what you do is you put a couple lights on it and you've got a street lamp. <laughs> <laughs> you've heard of underglow. Have you heard of overglow? <laughs> Barely long enough. It's a UFO sighting. We're not doing dumb stuff. I'm gonna try and pull this thing off of here now that we got it kind of tacked. So, just maybe. It makes me feel better. You think this is actually gonna help you at all? Uh, <laughs> sure. Okay. I think it's only keep. As long as we keep that thing up there going, we'll be good. You want me to style it for you? Precision. Yeah, barber pull it. There you go. Yeah. It's high quality. Is this how you're going to run your fuel and throttle cable? <laughs> I hope not, but maybe. I didn't really put a lot of thought into that yet. Probably should have. Figure it out when we get there. 
That was probably a colossal waste of your electrical tape. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. Social and Alright, I think we're finally finished up making our giant massive intake. Why don't you stand that thing up to really accentuate what it is. I think it's as tall as you are, isn't it? Not quite. Oh, you're a little bit taller. So, Joe did an amazing job making this in like one day with... Welder was kind of sketchy and everything, so... But it's a sketchy thing, so that's fine. I don't know what we even call this. The lightning rod, the periscope, massive intake thing. We're getting ready to install it here. Um, I've got all the old stuff off here. This is a pretty taboo thing to do, but all of our stuff comes with gaskets. But one thing that I've always done, um, so gaskets don't stick on an intake, stick on a carburetor, is I'll actually put a very liberal amount of grease on them. And then your gaskets are pretty darn reusable. I'll really work this in. It looks bad, but I mean, I mean this gasket, it's probably like five years old at this point and it's always been under a four hole spacer or above or below i don't know but it's old and it's never ripped just because i've done this so you know take that for what you will but kind of a handy little trick that some old timer taught me a long time ago and it works pretty darn good so i'm gonna keep doing it whether you like it or not Can we put a front on this somewhere? Oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah, there's a big F. F. Press F for respects. Okay. So, just very casually. Gotta back up to see all of it. There we go. You know, if you look at it at the right angle, it looks normal. Are you sure about that? <laughs> if, if the right angle is you being blind. <laughs> looks pretty square and good. So... Did a good job squaring up your welds and everything. Oh boy, this is a really bad idea. So, is it gonna fit out the door? <laughs> if it doesn't, I have a sawzall. So okay, then there we go. The doors. That makes more sense than taking it off. Right. So. We'll just pick the car up and go sideways like a couch. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, get up here. Car's more rust than metal. Oh man, I don't like stepping there. Okay. Oh. Gotta take a step back again. This is your normal everyday carburetor installation. So, 
Yeah, I'm just amazed how flat you got that. Something else. Yeah, if you want to check your accelerator pump, you don't have to hurt your back now. You just get up here and look, you're like, hey, it's working good. Because that's what you want. Okay. Well, is it that much more convenient to check the accelerator pump up there than it is to lean over? You make a good argument. I don't even want to admit how long I thought about the throttle cables. It's so bad. But it does it does work. So we're just going to stop analyzing it at that point. This is boring. Maybe we should check back when I have this done. Let's just, I just want to put the scoop on just so you guys can see what I've seen. And just know how ridiculous this look, looks because the, the scoop really ties it together. And it almost looks normal, even though it doesn't whatsoever. Oh. Da, 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 da. oh no. There we go. Helps if I can do geometry. Hey, can you even get that whole thing in frame? Just barely. <laughs> the periscope. Not the periscope. <laughs> Throttle cable is definitely the hardest thing to do on this. Some Amazon bicycle throttle cable that I had laying around for like a motorized bicycle project, whatever. And then I had to steal some parts off a 65 Galaxy up there. Some more parts from another car, whatever. We cobble fabbed up this little deal. So poor Joe, I, I should have told him it was gonna be right in the visual area. It's very sketchy, but it does seem to work. It's bad. Isn't that's it? that's so bad. But it's like got enough play where it's not gonna jam up and it's not gonna go anywhere. It feels like really legit. Check the throttle up there. I mean, it, it works irritatingly well. Yeah. And I think it'll be good on the road because um, the rest of it surely isn't gonna be. So. Okay. You can try and start it. Prime the pump. Yeah. See. Oh, I didn't even mention so. My biggest fear with this is we have a mechanical fuel pump, right? And so then I add an electric fuel pump after the mechanical because there's no way the fuel pump's going to push it up there. So it's like an El Cheapo down there. But in theory, you know, so I'm going to crank it over and get fuel up to it with the mechanical pump and then we'll cut that on and just see what happens. I'm going to take the scoop off. How confident do you feel? Should we just try and start it right away? Yeah. Of course so. Yeah. Of, course. of course. Of course you would say that. Those are fine. You need to go on a diet, apparently. It just doesn't have the same effect with the scoop on it. It does not. It needs a mailbox. Air mail. Got any more dad jokes? Right. I already broke it. Oh, the starter's bad or something? <laughs> Battery yeah, cable off? You know, I didn't sacrifice a lamb or sprinkle the blood of a virgin on this starting solenoid, so, you know. You just kind of wiggle it around. That'd be fine now. That wiring. Uh, most of that was before I bought the car five years ago. Okay. I could have fixed it, but I didn't. Don't have time. Give her another rev. Oh. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah, let me check the tune on everything. I'm sure it's like egregiously wrong. So it'd be nice to see what it's doing. Um, I need to check the float height. I'm sure that's all cattywampus all over the place. 
because that's a way different scenario than I had before. Um, you change fuel pressure, it changes the relationship of the flow. But other than that, I mean, it was almost like um, disappointing that it ran so quick. I was totally assuming it would be worse because that's what, I mean, the internet, dude, it's, it's really cold. Is it really? It's really cold, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> all right so i think between the combination of my two fuel pumps and i might not need to honestly i just did the provision because i have to leave tomorrow and so my fuel pressure was a lot higher so you know it sounded kind of chunky you know it seemed like it was pretty rich and everything and i thought maybe it's falling out of suspension so i was really hoping it was the float here and it is when i pulled the side plug it ran out it should be right at the bottom of the threads of the sight plug. Now the beauty of the electric fuel pump is we can turn it on and basically without the engine running, it'll just run out and I can adjust it and see where it is. So go ahead and flip that on. Well, that's pretty good. So it was about a turn and a half. So we're bumping a lot more fuel pressure at the moment. So you can go ahead and shut that off. We're doing Pretty good. It's pretty precarious being above the exhaust with soaked in gasoline. Yeah. Yeah. Safe. Safety non-existent. Not even on the Richter scale. Good thing it's so sturdy as grab onto that, right? What could go wrong? Just it rips out of the intake and you go flying and... Mm -hmm. It actually is pretty sturdy. What do you think? Should we try and pull it out of here? Yeah, if it fits. Yeah, it looks... Looks close, doesn't it? It's very close. We can always try it and then take it off and pull out and put it back on. That would be sad. Almost scuffed my paint. It would also be sad. I can't see it. You're good. Keep going. Yeah, it's not going to fit. Definitely gonna hit the garage door. Yeah. What does it look like up there? This is a weird point of view. The carburetor leak would be pretty catastrophic. It's a good thing your garage door opener is offset. Yeah. Slow. Oh. Slow. Uh, it stopped. I think you're going to hit your choke. You're close. But that one breather yeah, on your we, choke. We get by the... Oh yeah, the actual opening is a little bit lower, isn't it? How much do you think we can lower the tire pressure and get out? <laughs> it's so close. That would be awesome. You wanna, I don't know, you wanna poke one of them and sure. bleed it down and roll it out? Sweet skull, look at that. Hey, it was on it when I bought it, all right? You know? All right. How are we looking now? It's gotta be close, right? Oh, that's gonna be real close. How low did you go with your tire? How low can you go? Hopefully low enough. Oh, you did not go le nearly as low as I did. Oh, well, aren't you? Whatever you are. What? <laughs> <laughs> I put your skull back on. I didn't want you to lose it. I wouldn't want to lose it. It's been there for, you know, however long, so. Sentimental. Weird. I know. I've never said that before. Wee. I've never heard of someone sentimental about the skull valve, <laughs> stem cover. Yeah. valve stem cover. All right, use gravity for advantage this time. Yeah, just roll out. It doesn't roll so good with the tires like this. What do it look like? Good. Oh boy. That is really close. 
Oh. <laughs> it's alive. You it's know, we probably should have determined if we could do that long before we did all the fire hazard stuff where we would not have got out of the garage with caught on fire. No, that would have been bad. It's a good thing you didn't have any fuel leaks. Right. Ta-da! You just have to air up your tires and air down your tires every time you pull in. Look how obnoxious that is. Try and putz down the road. It's obviously ready. Yeah. Know, clearly. Maybe put some air back in the tires? All right, so we're tuned up. We're out of the garage. We have our tires aired up. And really, I, other than the float level from this stuff, I didn't have to change anything on the carb. The carb cheater here is doing all the leg work, which we'll talk more about this in another video. So, doing a pretty good job keeping this thing running. You know, fuel's probably falling out of suspension. This is a bad idea. All right, let's just get that out of the way ahead of time. But it's re-injecting air to true up here, fuel ratio. It's like it's re-atomizing it and doing a pretty good job. Not the intent of this, but nice added benefit. But we'll talk about that more later. With that, um, well, we went this far, so it's probably gonna do a little road test. What do you think? Yeah, avoid the tree. Obnoxious. There's a carburetor up there somewhere. <laughs> oh, the tree. The tree. Oh, I'm in the tree. Mount St. Petrol. <laughs> Is there any more tree? Uh, you just pulled. Oh, you just missed it. Oops. <laughs>